Hi guys, I'm Will, this is Jack. Today we're gonna to be talking all things oysters. There's a fair amount of mystique around how to shuck an oyster, how to prepare them. I think people are quite nervous about oysters getting sick and how to handle them. Uh, they're actually really, it's a really simple way to open them, really simple way to prep them, really simple way to serve them. We're gonna show you how to do it today. Crofty is the uh, absolute shucking maestro. So to open our oyster, we use this lovely uh, chain mail gloves, which we just buy from our fish supplier. It just, um, it's a bit more hygienic because we can boil them up uh, after service. Um, it stops the guys slitting into themselves and cutting themselves with the oyster knife and it just saves us quite, quite often in restaurants they use a cloth or a folded napkin, which just, especially as oysters and allergen. So the knife that we use, an oyster knife, so it's just a really short stubby blade that's quite hard to break because obviously it's doing quite a lot of work to prise open these oysters. So it's short, squat, quite fat and it's got this like really good little protector here so you don't sword. smash your hand on um, on the oyster and make it bleed which is easy to do. This is a Carlingford oyster, Carlingford rock oyster. So you get two types of oysters, you get rock and native. Well, native oysters are much flatter. Um, rock oysters look a bit more bumpy like this. So this is from Carlingford just north of Dublin. You can see you've got a fat end and a thin end. So here is where the seal is, uh, the joint, and then the muscle is sort of just up to the right. The muscle is what's holding the lid to the base. So we're just gonna go in here. There's almost like a little groove you can see which shows you almost like where you need to go in with the tip. So we're gonna go in with the tip and then we're gonna push it in, release the muscle and then twist the shell. Very similar to opening a scallop, um, but obviously just on a bit much smaller scale. We don't wanna damage the flesh by going in too far. Um, we wanna keep the action nice and smooth because all, all around the lid here is all very brittle. So just gonna hold it with the oyster with my hand I'm going to go in with the tip, making sure my hand is behind the guard. Pop the seal. Then with the tip, just going to run it through the muscle. Release the lid. Take it off. Take off any little fragments of shell which have come off. Pour off a little bit of the excess moisture. Now there's many ways you can serve these. You could serve it like so, just as it is, connected to the shell. It looks really nice and pretty. And that way it will just sit on the, sit on your uh, crushed ice like so. Crushed ice is quite a traditional way to serve them because it keeps the oyster nice and cold. Quite often if you just served it on a plate, within a couple of minutes it'll be warm. And if you're having 12, 18, 24 oysters, they're going to be war slightly warm by the time you get there. It's one of those things that it's, it's actually a really sustainable ingredient as well because they're literally just filters. They just sit there on the bottom of the ocean uh, on, on rocks and literally just clean the sea. So you can get, these are quite young oysters. Some oysters get to a huge size, which is not really typically what we eat. So these are quite young. They've got a really, um, when you talk about oysters, you often get sweet, sweet or creamy or minerality. It's like a flavor profile. So these ones I'd say are quite, they're almost a little bit minerally, but they've got that sweetness as well. So it's a really good oyster for anyone who's not that sure about them. Anyone who's sort of just getting into them, it's sweet, it's creamy, and it's got a really nice soft texture as well. So I'll show you two other ways that you can serve them. So we've got the one there, it's just, just been opened, left connected to the shell, looks really nice and pretty. The second way, as you can see, the muscle is just there to the, um, to my right, your left hand side of the shell. You can just see it just there, like a small little muscle. Just take the very tip, make sure the, the blade is clean, doesn't have any oyster fragments left on it. And just with the very tip, it has a slight edge on one side. With the very tip, it's going to cut through the muscle, scraping against the shell, releasing it from there. And that's the second way you can serve it. Again, it looks nice and pretty, but now the muscle is released from the shell. So it can slide off much easier. And the third way would be the same sort of process as the second one. Just going to release the muscle from the shell. And then fold down the edges and flip the oyster over, which looks a bit more, which looks a bit prettier. It's a lot easier to eat, but it just takes a little bit more work on service. It kind of reveals that beautiful plump muscle at the bottom. I always think that looks like absolutely swan hair when you do it like that. We've had pretty tricky circumstances before where we've broken an oyster knife midway through service and then really, really struggled. I used like a, a Japanese Deva, which is a huge knife to try and open one and it just doesn't work. It's, it's one of those things, it's like perfectly designed to do the job. I would just recommend getting one from Amazon. They cost about £1.99 um, and they'll last you pretty much a lifetime. I went on holiday to uh, France this summer for my honeymoon and we actually got these from a French supermarket. 
and they were a euro each, so I picked up 30 of them in a bag and brought them back on the ferry. I think with oysters, you get a lot of nervous people. It's like um, how your mum cooks a chicken breast, you know, they hear about salmon salmonella and they're absolutely terrified. In actual fact, oysters are a living creature, so they should be live when they're shucked. They can last if, if in good conditions for like up to eight to ten days, but people don't realise that. They think it should be completely fresh every day. Uh, but if you keep them in perfectly packed, dark containers with seaweed, the natural environment, in the right um, condition, they can last for a long time. Typically, we don't store them for any longer than two days in the restaurant just because we sell so many of them. It's all about just keeping them in a cool, cool condition, cool environment, um, looking after them properly like everything else. I and mean, they'll last for a really long time. We just serve them quite classically. Well, classically for us anyway. So oysters, or crushed ice, bit of seaweed garnish. In here, we've got some lovely pickled shallots. So we like them super fine. Nice bit of beetroot vinegar on top of there. It adds a nice color, nice little bit of crunch. Uh, we've got just a little bit of fresh lemon. Little twist of pepper, some people quite fancy, and then obviously the all-important sriracha. Available online, link in the bio. Traditionally, you'd use Tabasco, um, but obviously our little twist on it being, uh, seeing as we make the sriracha in-house, which just seems a good little twist on it to use the fallow sriracha. Are you a fan of dress oysters? Like, you know, when restaurants mm. put a load of effort, it's like a big I, old I, think I appreciate them, but personally, I just, I prefer natural. Yeah. For me, a little bit of shallot. I like the actual shallot, not much of the liquid, just for the texture. I like, a, I like a little bit of everything on mine. A little bit of lemon, a little twist of pepper, and then the sriracha, a couple of drops. How do you like yours? I think, to be honest, like, I'll always have one like, with the full works, full dressing, but then sometimes it's nice just to have it completely uh, raw. Mm. Uh, I don't like, a lot of people like the juice that comes off them. I like a little bit of it, but I like to pour some of it off to be honest. A few drops of lemon, maybe a little bit of shallot on this one. The mussel's got this really nice meaty texture and then this is creamy and sweet up here. And the rest, like Jack said, depends how much of the liquid you want, but it's, that's got the minerality, that fresh sea flavour. It's one of those things that everyone has their own little way. Like some people, some people will probably watch this and be like, oh my God, you morons, like why are you putting scratch here? Why are you putting shallots on there? <laughs> Christmas has come around the corner, guys. Uh, if you ever, is it ever a time to have oysters, definitely Christmas time. Speak to your local fishmonger. Have a shook off with your, fat, with your, with your close friends, obviously safely, of course. I'm, Buy some fellow sriracha to put on them. Like you won't, you won't regret it. Wait.